everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. My name is Jess and today I'm going to be sharing with you the final of the three book hauls uh, that I have been talking about just recently. So the first book haul was physical books, the second book haul was ebooks and today is children's books. So I will link to the other two book hauls in the description box down below if you want to go and check those out. Uh, now I have a nine and an eleven year old um, and they are both voracious uh, little readers and just before lockdown in the UK we went to the library got a ton of books from the library uh, but because we are still in lockdown and the libraries haven't reopened we haven't been able to get any books uh, for the kids and they have literally literally read everything they can get their hands on that is suitable for them so despite the fact that we were supposed to be doing a no buy six months we made the decision that for everybody's sanity we were going to buy some books um so without further ado let's jump in and start talking about them the first book that i am going to mention probably needs very little introduction and that is the hobbit by jrr tolkien this if you don't know is children's fantasy and is the prequel to tolkien's later work the adult fantasy series the lord of the rings so this particular book we are following the adventures of bilbo baggins he is is a hobbit who lives in Middle Earth and he is very happy and content with his life in his little corner of the world until that is Gandalf the wizard and a band of dwarves descend on him and send him off on an adventure. This is just a fantastic book about adventure, about bravery, about friendship, um, all mixed in with a little bit of magic and there are some really good fantastical characters in this book. Obviously we have hobbits, we have wizards and dwarves, we have trolls and goblins and dragons um, and it's just so good. Eli is actually currently reading it and he is on page 30 um, and he is loving it so yeah definitely one that I would recommend um, and just a fantastic fantastic middle grade book. The next book I'm going to haul is Lord Brocktree by Brian Jacques and this was a little bit of a selfish buy because I had and read and loved these books when I was a tween and foolishly I sold the whole series um, right before I got married and now I really regret that because I wish I'd had my original ones to pass on to the kids uh, but anyway so I bought this in the hope that the kids will like them um, and we can jump on and get the rest of the series. So these are fantasy adventure books set in the world of Redwall. The characters are anthropomorphic animals who all have the power of speech bar a few I think on occasion you come across a mute horse for example and each book follows a different character having a different adventure set in a different time period in Redwall's history. There are a few main characters uh, for example there is Martin the warrior who is a mouse and I think he appears in a couple of the books but really each book could be taken on its own. So Lord Brocktree is about a badger called Lord Stonepaw whose ancestral home Salamanderstrand is under threat from an evil wildcat called Ungat Trun. These are just such good fun um, and oddly emotional as well. You really get invested in the characters and forget that you're reading about animals. I actually have a really clear memory of reading one of the books and crying because of something that happened to one of the characters. Um, so yeah, you really do get invested in them. There are battles, there is politics, there is romance and so, so much adventure and plenty more squeezed into each of these books. And I am actually planning on rereading them myself at some point um, and I just really hope the kids like them because um, yeah I thought they were fantastic and I would highly recommend them. So whilst I was on the hunt for some books to buy I had a little bit of a struggle finding clean books for Meg and Eli and by that I mean no sex um, and only limited violence or peril although hold that thought because I will talk about a book in a little while that features murder but we'll just push that to one side for now. Um, so the next series of books that I'm going to talk about is one which was recommended time and time again uh, because I did want books that were challenging for them to read 
but that was suitable for their age. So the first one in this series is Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger and I actually bought this as a set of four even though I think there are about 10 books in the series so this is the first one and then we have Keeper of the Lost Cities Exile, Keeper of the Lost Cities Everblaze and Keeper of the Lost Cities Never Seen. So in these books we are following our protagonist Sophie who is 12 years old and is a telepath which means that she can read the thoughts of people around her and she's never told anybody this not even her family and then one day she meets a mysterious boy called Fitz who reveals to her that she is actually an elf and then Sophie is whisked off off to the magical land of the lost cities um, and basically must learn to control her power but also to help the lost cities fight an evil dark force and it says on the back not everyone is thrilled with her homecoming there are secrets buried deep in Sophie's memory secrets that other people desperately want secrets they might even kill for so I mentioned before about books that had limited violence and I'm hoping that these uh, it's violence in more of a threat or fantastical type of way uh, but as I said these were really recommended um, so we're gonna give them a go either myself or James may try and read the first one just to be sure but we do often use a website called common sense media which is usually very reliable for telling uh, parents what books and what films are suitable and what are not so um, yeah we're gonna give these a go then I picked up a trio of books from Newbery medal winner Kate D Camillo and Kate D Camillo is an author that came onto my radar because of Katie from life between words she really rates her as a middle grade author and I saw this little set um, online so I thought that I would pick them up so we will go through them uh, and I'll tell you what they are about. So the first one is The Tale of Despero and the tagline for this book is the story of a mouse, a princess, some soup and a spool of thread. Now I've never read a Kate de Camillo book but this one um, has been on my radar for a little while. I think it was turned into a film uh, which I have also never watched but this is The Tale of Despero who is a tiny sick mouse with over large ears who goes on an adventure and I've seen a number of buzzwords around this book including the like of charming, delightful, heartwarming and beautifully written so I'm hoping that the kids enjoy this. It's a little bit different from the other traditional fantasy books that we have bought them but I hope that they will enjoy it nonetheless. Then we have and I'm probably going to say this wrong Flora and Ulysses the Illuminated Adventures and this I believe is about a young girl called Flora who is obsessed with comic books and one day she looks out of the window and sees her neighbour about to vacuum up a squirrel and I think from there uh, an interesting friendship forms between Flora and the squirrel. Um, that's all I know about it, it sounds really really funny. Uh, it says on the back, laugh out loud funny, tender, difficult and hopeful all at once. Cynics beware and it has got um, really sweet illustrations all the way through as well so yeah another one that I hope that they like a little bit different um but yeah hope they enjoy it and then the final one is the shortest of the three but actually is the one that I want to read the most and that is because of Win Dixie so this is about 10 year old India Opal Baloney who one day goes down to the supermarket to buy some groceries and returns home with a dog which she names Win Dixie um India is the daughter of a preacher and her mother left when she was three and they have just moved to a new town so she's having a hard time making friends but it is because of Winn-Dixie that India is able to start making friends and also able to build up the courage to ask her father about her mum and why her mum left and it seems an awful lot of story to fit into such a small book but I'm hoping that it's going to pack a punch because it certainly seems so. I believe that this is about community community and friendship, about love and about life not always turning out the way that you think it will. So yeah, I actually am probably going to nick this and read it because I feel like I could probably read it in one sitting and then I can recommend it to the kids. Um, but yeah, another one that I'm excited that we have. And then I'm just really quickly going to mention this book. Um, I know I mentioned earlier about clean books and violence and that kind of thing and romance and everything like that is okay as long as it is age appropriate. Um, so this is a series of books that Megan has been reading and we bought her the 10th one or the 9th one in the series and that is Top Marks for Murder. So this is part of a Murder Most Unladylike Mystery series by Robin Stevens. And as you might have guessed, these books are about murder. But um, I have read, I have read one. Uh, I do know that it is done in a 
good and age appropriate manner she, Megan absolutely eats them up she loves them this actually sparked an interest for Meg in Sherlock Holmes um, so she has a puzzle book that is a Sherlock Holmes puzzle, that is a Sherlock Holmes puzzle book and she loves that um, so as I said this is the one two three four five six seven eighth book in the series I think um, and it's about two girls we have Daisy Wells and Hazel Wong who are at a private girls school and basically in every book some kind of murder or mishap occurs and the girls have to solve what has happened um, and as I said it's all above board it's all age appropriate I'm not against violence I'm not against romance I just think it needs to be um, for example a couple of the books that I saw recommended for middle grade were Sarah J Mass. I have read all of Sarah J Mass's books and I would not say that they are suitable for an 11 year old because of the level of sex that is in them and it, I'm not talking about romance or even the allusion to it it is sometimes quite graphically described but I have seen people recommend those for 11 year olds and each to their own but Meg is quite an innocent 11 year old and I would like to keep her that way for as long as possible which is my mama heart talking for sure um but yeah I consider these books to be quite appropriate for her age and again they're good fun um they're interesting the mystery it always takes Meg right until the end to uh find out the mystery she's actually already read this one so we probably need to look at buying the next one in the series but yeah just another one that I thought I'd throw in there to recommend we actually bought it a little bit before we bought these other books but I wanted to throw it in the mix anyway because I would definitely recommend them there you go they are the books that we have picked up recently for the kids do let me know if you've read any of them let me know if you would recommend any as well because hopefully soon we will be able to go back to the library and it's always good to go in with a little list of what we would like to try and find um, if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give me the thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you aren't already as always thank you for watching take care stay safe and I'll see you all soon